Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Awesome. Hallelujah. Thanks, Daniel. Awesome. Well, man, I am so excited to see everyone here this evening. This is awesome. You know, this was very short notice, and I am so blessed by how many of you showed out. We only advertise this just to our partners and short notice, and man, I, I believe this is a God deal. I'm going to give you more explanation when I get up and minister here in just a few minutes, but uh, God told me to do this with a very specific purpose in mind, and uh, I just believe it must be the Lord to see so many people, and we've got them from everywhere. And I've talked to people all the way from Washington to Maine, down to Florida and Arizona, California, and every place in between. Where did you yell at? Texas. Texas. Well, that's a foreign country on its own. That's just awesome. So I'm so excited. You know, I was talking to Lamont and Sharon down here just a while ago, and he went to school in Marshall, Texas, where I was born. And... Our paths have crossed. God told him 20 years ago that he was going to be working for us. He leads praise and worship, has done it for many years, and he thought it was going to be like leading praise and worship here. And I just found this out tonight that back in 2011, our director called and asked him if he was interested in leading praise and worship, and it just wasn't time. And he said no. And it turned out that his wife, Sharon, had to go get her CPA certification and stuff. And now they are here working for us, a tremendous blessing. He's leading praise and worship. And Daniel came to us, and I've known Daniel for 30 years, but our paths have been in different directions. And then God brought him here, and I tell you, he's the perfect person. And I could just go down the line. And it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. I think when we get to heaven, we are going to be shocked to see how our lives have crossed paths. I was talking to Joe down here, and I went to his place, what, 30 years ago in Cleburne, Texas? 40 years ago. And was at his place there, and, and Joe Nay, the guy who was my mentor, used to work for Joe, and uh, it's a small world. And God has supernaturally connected us together. All of you are partners with this ministry. And I tell you, it's, uh, it's amazing. God has brought us from all these different places. So I am very, very excited about all the good things happening. I, my students have heard me say this, but I have to tell you when I'm excited because I'm always like this. <laughs> you can't tell it by looking at me, but I'm really, really excited. Amen. So... Let me mention a couple of things they wanted me to mention this. We do have resources downstairs, and uh, so we've got a lot of different resources. I had some people ask about that already. It's down there. You can also get all of the um, conferences on CDs or DVDs, and uh, USBs will have to be ordered. And if I'm not mistaken, I think the USB has the CD and the DVD of these services on it. Is that correct? And so uh, if you get the USB, you'll get a DVD and CD. And um, we're going to have prayer ministry after the service, depending on exactly what happens, but we will be praying for you. I've had some people ask about that. Tomorrow we open the doors at 8 a.m. The worship is at 9 a.m. I know some of you want to sleep in, and uh, 9 a.m. is early, but, man, you're going to miss a blessing. This is the best praise and worship group. I may be prejudiced, but I just love it. It's awesome. And then Jesse Duplantis is going to be with us from 9.30 in the morning until noon. At 2 p.m., we've got Paul Milligan right here. Paul, stand up. Let everybody see Paul Milligan. Paul has been a friend for many, many years. And again, it's one of these things our paths crossed I mean, our paths crossed so many years ago. He heard me on the radio teaching on the baptism of the Holy Spirit and received it, prayed for it. Nothing happened right then, but in the middle of the night, two or three in the morning, he woke up speaking in tongues, scared the fire out of Patsy. 
She was over in the corner, and anyway, he's been on my board for many years now. He's the CEO of our ministry. I've also got Ron Bird here. He's another one of my board members. Stand up, Ron. He's a, an, a surgeon in uh, Shreveport, Louisiana. And man, he's got an awesome testimony, how our paths crossed and what we've how we've known each other for many decades. It's just awesome. But anyway, Paul will be ministering tomorrow afternoon. And I needed to let you know this because I don't think that it's been announced anywhere else. But tomorrow evening, you're on your own for lunch tomorrow, but uh, from 5.30 until 7, we got hors d'oeuvres and dessert again downstairs the way that we had tonight. So I wanted to let you know that. And it's just going to be a super awesome time. So I've got more I'm going to share with you about how the Lord told me to bring this together. But tonight we got something real special for you. You know, the Lord's doing some things here that I wished I had time to give you all of the details. I really do. I've got two or three videos. Instead of playing them, just for time's sake tonight, I'm just going to share some things. But I would encourage you to go to our website and uh, look up the Little Star video. Have any of you ever seen the Little Star video? Well, quite a few of you have already seen that, but this is God that put this together. I didn't uh, choose this. The Lord gave me a vision of this decades before I ever built it. And it turns out that the man who used to own this property got saved two weeks before he died. His caregiver, uh, led him to the Lord, and he felt so bad about wasting all of his life not seeking the Lord that he dedicated this property to the Lord and had a vision of buildings with glass all across the southern side so that they could see Pikes Peak as they sat in a Christian school. I knew none of this stuff, and I designed this decades before, built it, and before we knew any of that. This was in the heart of God. God put it together. And I tell you, there is something absolutely supernatural happening here. Matter of fact, I was telling Jamie just yesterday or this morning that, man, I love ministering here. It's like, why would I go anywhere else? <laughs> Our Bible college students, again, anyway, I could share a lot about that, but boy, people pay to come hear the gospel. And if they don't do what you say, you can flunk them. It's just awesome. I tell you, you just doesn't get much better than this. <laughs> it's awesome. And uh, so anyway, there's a lot of good things going on. I did want to have Daniel and Carly. This is Daniel Amstutz. He's the one that was leading our praise and worship in Carly Terradez. And uh, many of you will know Carly and Ashley. Their daughter Hannah was the one that was healed in England 11 years ago, I think it was and uh, just awesome. But now they run our healing school, which can be seen every Thursday at 1 Colorado time, and it's broadcast, live streamed on the Internet. Plus we have uh, either four or five years' worth of archives, and Daniel has often said that you can't watch five years of healing school archived without getting healed. <laughs> Man, that's a great thing. But we just held a Healing is Here conference in Durham, North Carolina and had some awesome things. So would you guys come up here and I just want you to share a little bit about this because we are taking these healing schools on the road and I wasn't there, but I tell you what, I didn't need to be there. Jesus was there and they saw some awesome things happen. That was great. So, yeah. Tell us what happened. It's so exciting. You know, we had 1,800 people register for this event in Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina. And uh, Pastor Greg was also a part of the event. And it was so exciting to see the excitement mount towards this event from the Internet. I mean, we've been praying about this for months. And as this, uh, you know, excitement began to build, I kept just thinking and meditating on what it's going to be like for those people to be free. What it's going to be like for those people to no longer have to be with that limitation anymore. And by the time the meeting started, it was just explosive. I mean, they were even fanatics. before. Even before. They were just fanatics. They came from everywhere. We had people that flew from Costa Rica. Costa yeah. Rica to come to Raleigh, Durham, North yeah. Carolina. Yeah, that's pretty I mean, big deal. what's up with that? I don't know. People from New York, people from all the Canada, Canada, lots Oregon. of Canadians. Yeah, lots of them. Yeah. So it was it was awesome. We had we have a whole list of praise reports here. Yeah. Um, but uh, so we, I mean, I don't know what, how you want to do this, Daniel. You want to just run yeah, through that, me, run through that. We had me, to we had to make a synopsis because there were so many of them. Well, here's the deal. Okay, you ready for this? 
No, you're not. <laughs> you ready for this? Yeah. Okay. Jesus is the name above every name. <laughs> you know, how, why is it that we categorize certain illnesses and diseases as much harder for Jesus than others? But we do. And you know what's so exciting is uh, for several years now, we've seen people come and say, well, God can heal this, but he can't heal something like AIDS. Mm -hmm. And we've had several people who've been healed from AIDS. And I remember the one lady from England who came over yep. your motherland. Yes, yeah. she sounded like me. And she sounded like you. Yes, and she anointed. Was, and she was desperate. <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to say. I know. Yeah. It's and amazing. She was really desperate for her little guy. And what was it that he had? He was autistic. He was autistic. Mm -hmm. And so, you know what? We've heard that autism can't be healed. How many of you heard that? Mm -hmm. It's possible. Well, not with God. See? So, look at this. Blurred vision, back and hip pain, degenerative discs, shoulder pain, arthritis and joint pain. A lot of pain. A lot of pain. Pain in the neck. And, you know, pain in the neck. Yeah. I hate that stuff. And Jesus carried away our pains. So if Jesus carried him away, there's no sense in both of us carrying it. We don't need him. Uh, you know, I'm just saying, right? Lots of people healed of scoliosis. We had multitudes of those. Blood clots dissolved. Mm -hmm. rota rotator cuff injury healed right yeah. on the spot. Blindness, deafness, stroke, neuropathy, nervous system disease. Fibromyalgia. All kinds of stuff. We had cancer. Cancer healed, I'm thinking yep. of a situation where Sue and Brian were ministering to this lady. You guys, she was so frail. She looked like somebody that had come from years of Just starvation. A bag of bones. Yeah, her arms were about as big as my big toe, yep. you know? But I, well, you know, let's not go there. But <laughs> she was really Moving skinny on. and she could not even stand up. She was mm -hmm. in her wheelchair because that's all she could do. And that was on Friday night. They all blurred together after all. I know. But she left pushing her wheelchair. She left pushing her wheelchair, <laughs> totally She's healed. healed of totally her cancer. Healed. My, fa my favorite one, though, was the little girl that we prayed for. Yes, this that was, was so special. That really special. touched me. Two of our students uh, contacted us before we got there. Mm -hmm. And they said they had recently come into a relationship with this family. They were Baptist. And they really were reaching out. They had gotten a terrible prognosis for both of their youngest children. Their daughter was three and a half years old, and their little guy was about a year and some yep. months old. Yep. And they had seen uh, Ashley and Carly's story with their daughter, Hannah. And it gave them such hope. Mm -hmm. And as they saw that story, they said, is there any way that we could request that you and and Carly personally ministered to us. That, that's just where they were. It was like the woman with the issue of blood who said, yeah. if I can just touch the hem of his garment. Right. And that's where they were. So we were able to make that happen and we went back and ministered to them. And you know what, I gotta just say this, Carly, I haven't even told you this, but it is such a blessing to watch how you minister to people in these situations because you've been there, you've experienced it. And God's it's been just, good to us. It's such confidence. And, and Carly says to the mom, she says, okay, now here's the deal. She says, okay, we got the prognosis, we got all the, you know, but where are you? Yeah. How, how will you know right now tonight? And she began to zero in on this mom's heart. Mm -hmm. And this mom said, you know what? I have lived with this long enough for my kids. And you could see the mama bear start to rise up in her. She got Even feisty. as she started to talk. And Boldness I mean, started to come up. She started to get an attitude, didn't oh, she? Yeah. You know? Come on. And she said, I'm not having it another day. That's right. My daughter and my son are going to be healed. And I said, all right, let's do this. Let's do this. So we began to speak over her. And she was in one of those little mom pouches, you know, that moms put babies in. Kind of a little she was, she thing. was three and a half years old, but she was tiny. You know, this, she was so tiny. This was a, um, a degenerative neurological disease that only really, really rare that only 40 people in the whole world have. I That's think. what they said. Yeah. And both the, both the daughter is three years old and the one year old son had this condition and the life expectancy was just five years old. Yeah. So the three year old was exhibiting all the symptoms and was quite advanced in it. And she just was more like a vegetative state really, really at was. that point. Yeah. Little hands and feet were all twisted under and the one year old didn't really, hadn't, hadn't really started showing any symptoms at that yes. point. Yes, That little girl's feet y'all were completely turned out mm -hmm. to the side like this.
And I remember Andrew saying one time, you know, he was teaching on healing. We were at a gospel truth rally. And he said, you know, the reason why I haven't been sick in so many years is because I hate sickness worse than you. And I remember I was sitting down here in the front row and I kind of went, oh, yeah? It's on. I mean, it like spurred me to godly <laughs> jealousy, you know? And you're like, you get to the place when you're around so much of this that you just... I mean, I hate the devil, but I really hate him now. Oh, yeah. And I really hate what he was doing to that three-and-a-half-year-old mm -hmm. and that little one-and-a-half-year-old or whatever he was. So anyway, the feet were turned sideways. We began to just speak the word of, of God over this little girl's life. And as we're speaking the word of God, we start to see her feet start to turn like this. Yeah. And the mom as, started getting excited at that point. The mom started getting really yeah. excited. She's, she's they're crying. Baptist. They've never seen anything like this. Come on, they're Baptist. Yeah. I mean. Praise Jesus, I was Baptist. Right? <laughs> so I'm laying my hands on this little girl's back, so tiny, my hand just covered her whole back. Oh, yeah. And I started to feel like something moving inside of her back. And it felt like a... Like like a squirming. Maybe, maybe it was like a, a squirming. Yeah, like a spasm or something. Yeah. I didn't know. And she started to cough, which isn't unusual for people with digestive stuff going on. But a little while later, the mom and the grandma took the little girl out of the meeting, and the little girl threw up. And when she threw up, she threw up a snake. That's that demon coming out. That was a deliverance right yep. there. And that snake was the size of an index finger, came right out of that little three-and-a-half-year-old. Now, they've been contacting me through Facebook, and not only is the little girl's feet completely turned in, she's now sitting up, yep. she's now holding up her head, yep. she's now alert for the first time in years and years she's in healed. her life. She's Hallelujah. healed. Hallelujah. Woo! Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And you know what's so exciting about this? is they went to their adult Sunday school class and told them what had happened at the Healing is Here event, and now the Baptists want to hear more. Yep. <laughs> They've just messed up their theology. <laughs> Amen. I tell you what, what a blessing to be able to get to do this. Amen. What, I mean, what an opportunity in our culture today when healthcare is getting crazier and crazier to say, you know what, we've got a better way. We know the great physician. Amen. And we have a good report. Amen. Amen. And God wants to do that not just through us, but through you. It's That's a right. believer's ministry. Amen. Amen. So praise the Lord. Amen. And I've got to say, Andrew, every one of these partners is part of that event that we just That's had. That's right. That's you know, right. We, we wouldn't have been able to go if it wasn't for you all. You yes. sent us there. Yes. Amen. You're part of every one of those miracles. Yes. So thank you. Amen. And let me point out, too, that the night that Hannah got healed, Ashley, the father, had Hannah on his shoulders running around just celebrating. And I, was, I remembered her from praying for her. And I said, so what happened? He came up and gave a testimony. And it was... Awesome what he said, but one of the things that really touched me, he asked how many of the people in the audience were partners, and he thanked them, and he said that it had only been two weeks that Carly and Ashley had heard of my ministry, and they went on the website, and because everything was free, they had listened to nearly everything I had in, in Bible two school weeks. before we came to Bible school, I think. And Ashley got up and he said, thank you. If it wasn't for you, my daughter would be dead. That's true. That's and true. Every one of you is a partner. You have a part in not only Hannah's healing, but all of this Amen. that's happening. All and man, this. we are just all thrilled to have you as partner. Yeah. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much. Isn't that awesome? I tell you, God is doing awesome things. I wish I had time to just tell you everything, but the reason we're so excited about it is because this is the house that you built. And these testimonies are the people's lives that are being changed. I wish you could come and sit in on a class. And uh, just this week, I've had, I don't know, dozens of people come and say, I'm getting it. The lights are coming on. Lives are being changed. And you have a part in every single thing that's happening. I wish I had time to tell you all of it. But real quickly, let me just mention that we've got uh, a number of three-year, third-year programs here in the school and we're going to highlight one of them here tonight. But we've also just started a school of practical government or a practical government school. And David Barton is the one who's put this together and has written the curriculum. And then uh, we've got Pastor Mark Cowart, who I could spend a lot of time, but man, this is just his heart. This guy was made for what he's doing. 
and he is here directing it along with Richard Harris, one of our uh, graduates, and we have just opened up this practical government school, and I really believe that this school is going to change this nation in a short period of time. It's awesome. And then we have a business school, which uh, Paul Milligan runs. And I tell you, we have already seen a lot of miraculous things, and we're just getting started. The quality of people that he's bringing, we are starting an evangelism school next year, not this year, but next year. Uh, we also have a ministry school with Pastor Greg Moore. He's now the director of our Bible college, and he runs the ministry school. We have a worship school, and a sub-branch of that is the Creative Arts Department, which Adam Stone was here uh, leading praise and worship, the one in the middle, the one with the funny British accent. <laughs> and he's a blessing. Boy, God sent him over here, and the Murins. Uh, we have, I don't see Robert, I see the others, but anyway, uh, somewhere they're here. And you're gonna see Elizabeth and uh, Ivar up here. And real quickly, let me mention that we're going to play a little video, and Jamie is the woman who's playing the hymn, uh, the woman who had the issue of the blood and touched the hymn of Jesus' garment. And we're going to play this, and they're going to sing to this. And this is just a portion of a musical that we've put together here, and I tell you, it is awesome. And if you haven't uh, signed up to get this, we're just about a week away from having these things completed. Oh, yeah. There's two and a half hours worth of the musical, an hour and a half worth of behind the scenes thing. And I tell you, it is awesome. Uh, you're going to want to get it. And so we're only about a week away from having that DVD ready to put out. But um, we're going to do a little bit of that. And I also want to mention that the guy that you saw playing the drums, I don't know if you could see him tonight, but Cisco, man, he was excited. Cisco's the deaf guy who gets healed in this video, and it's just awesome. So anyway, let's watch this little video, and this is from the production that we did of God With Us. There's going to be a little bit of the behind-the-scenes uh, thing where we talk about it, but then we'll go right into this uh, touching the hem of his garment, and it, you'll be blessed by it. suspected of following the religious sect known as Christianity will be thrown to the lions. Our desire is just to give the word of God out to the people. Thank you for sending the comforter to us. Holy Spirit, thank you that you will lead us and remind us of the faith of Abraham, the heart of David, and the boldness and courage of Daniel. The show itself is so powerful, it draws you in. It's the Word of God, it's the story of Jesus Christ, it's the, the story of God's relentless pursuit of His people. We are not afraid of anything that you can do, for we know our God is able to deliver us. But even if He doesn't save us, if He chooses to let us die, we will say, him. I don't know. He is God. People can recognize themselves in being Peter, who maybe wanted very well to follow Jesus but failed. And we all are broken vessels and people with mistakes and, and flaws in our lives. But the grace of God can just totally cover and transform anyone. So no matter how far away you are from God, there's always a way back. There's always a grace that can lift you up.
Jesus, please come. My daughter, even now, she is at the point of death. Please lay your hands on her that she might live. Somebody touch me. Master, we're caught in this crowd like fish in a net. Jesus, please, my daughter. But somebody touch me. I feel power go out from me. My lord, it was me. My daughter, your faith has made you whole. Now go in peace. Redeemer and mercy upon me. For so long I searched for a cure. For I went to find the wisest man. But no one could help me, no one could free me from pain. I lost all that I had. Silver and gold could not pay. But today, the Lord, my Redeemer, had mercy upon me. I only touched the hem of his garment. And, and here, here I stand, stand now, free. Living in darkness and fear Every day was a fight To survive through this night with no end But today The Lord my Redeemer had mercy upon me I was blind But now I see Elizabeth and Robert. Is Robert here? Jamie. Come here, Elizabeth. Share a little bit about this. Is your husband around someplace? He's taking care of the kids. He's taking care of the kids. <laughs> Somebody's got to take care of them. Yes. So this is Elizabeth Muir and her and her husband, Robert, and the young man that you saw here is their nephew right here, Ivar. And he, they uh, have moved from Norway. We have a number of Norwegians here in the school. And tell them about how you came to do this. God just gave you this thing. We wanted to find, can I borrow yours? Yes, you may. <laughs> we wanted to find the most effective way of reaching out with the Word of God. Since I was a little girl, my passion was how many people can we bring with us to heaven? Shouldn't that be the most important thing in our lives? If we really believe that the Word of God is the uncorruptible seed, that will create faith in people's lives. I think that all of us, we should do everything we can, even finding creative ways of planting that seed. 
That's exactly what you guys are doing by being partners in this ministry. We need to find ways to give the word of God to people. If they want it or not, I don't care. But I will find ways to fool them. I will find ways, and I want them to come to cinemas and theaters and expect to eat popcorn and drink drinks and be happy. But I want to give them the word of God because I know that the Holy Spirit then will have a landing place so that we can bring them with us to heaven. So that's why we created uh, the God with us. We were missionaries in Israel, and we wanted to find the most effective way of reaching out to a whole nation. We don't have much time, so we wanted to be effective. So they didn't want to invite me to synagogues to preach, so that's why we created a musical. And with this musical, we were able to impact that nation in a very strong way. And now with God with us, I know that we are going to be able to reach out to millions of people across the world. We have, we have, yeah, come on, <laughs> That's powerful too. I was listening yeah. to that today. So it's already available. Awesome. If you'd like to get that yep. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> so again, I just want to say thanks to all of you partners. You know, without you, we couldn't be doing what we're doing. And God is bringing people here. Like the Murins have been offered uh, money to go to Broadway and perform on Broadway. They've been offered money to go to. Hollywood, and they say, why are you in the mountains of Colorado? <laughs> and it's because this is where God has sent them, and they just love us. And, uh, you know, we couldn't make things like this happen. God is doing something very, very special. Amen. So thank you again for being a part of it. So let me just share with you that the reason that I felt impressed to do this conference, and I'm just going to be real candid with you and share things, and I hope you don't misunderstand. It may sound like this is a selfish motive, but it's really not. It's, it's for you. But I was praying about all of our uh, things that we're doing here, and we need more money. And I was thinking about all kinds of things. And as I prayed about it, the Lord showed me some things, and I may work this into the message tonight, but at the moment, let me just say real quickly that way back, uh, probably nearly a year ago, matter of fact, I think it was October the 4th, if I'm not mistaken, of last year, I was watching my own television program, which this is kind of a strange thing to have happen. But, you know, I watch my program just to see what it looks like and if, you know, they are editing it right, different things. And I was watching my program, and as I was teaching on the Sabbath rest, God spoke to me through me. <laughs> it was really strange. But in a real short thing, what he basically said to me was, I was praying about, Lord, we need more money. We need more of this. And the Lord showed me from Genesis that when he created Adam and Eve, that he anticipated every need that they would ever have. And he didn't create them. And then they got hungry and said, God, I'm hungry. And God had to create something for them to eat. No, he anticipated their need. And he created the supply before they ever had the need. They didn't have to say, we've got to breathe. And he says, oh, I've got to create air. 
But see, he anticipated everything, and I knew this, and it applied it in some ways, but the Lord applied it to me concerning all of this and told me that before we ever had the need, that God had already supplied the need. And um, there's some other things. Uh, our ministry, I could tell you some things. Second Kings chapter 4, I may minister on that tomorrow night. And uh, the Lord had just showed me a bunch of things, and it just really ministered to me about that God had already supplied our needs before we had it. And so I got to praying about where is it? <laughs> and the Lord started showing me it's through partners. And so I started praying for our partners, and the Lord started showing me some things about partners and about partnership that really ministered to me. And it, it was a tremendous blessing to me. And, of course, I'm partners with other people, and I give. But as I started seeing these things, I thought, I need to share this with our partners. That, you know, you sow into us, but we don't impart into you maybe as much as we should. I got to thinking about a seed. You know, if you take a seed, that seed is powerless to release the power that's in it until it's planted in the ground. And then the ground gives to that seed. And the ground gives warmth, nourishment, moisture, and all of these minerals, and that's what makes the seed germinate. And as you sow seed into the ministry, you are giving, but we also need to give back. And of course, we pray for you, and we minister the Word, and I know that you receive in many ways, but the Lord just showed me some things that I believe could really impact you. And so, I was praying about this and thinking, man, I need to get to this, this to my partners. I need to share these things with them so that they can prosper. And I was praying about it, and then I had Jesse Duplantis here, and I had Creflo Dollar here, and I was sharing some of these things with them and talking to them about these very things. And, man, they got excited. And they said, I want to be a part of this. I want to minister to your partners. And so I said, well, man, that would be awesome. And it turned out Creflo was already booked, and I couldn't get him. We may do something later uh, with him, but Jesse says, I'll make time. So he's going to be flying in tomorrow. I also needed to correct something. Lori reminded me here that I said, we don't have lunch tomorrow. We do have lunch tomorrow, I was told. So that was my bad. It wasn't on my sheet. <laughs> you know, this, this is another great praise the Lord. God brought me all of these people who run everything, and I just show up, and I, if they don't tell me, I don't know. And I can show you right here on this piece of paper. It doesn't mention lunch. So, you know, that reminds me, I didn't give away any of our product, but they didn't have the platform out here, see? So that's their fault again. But uh, it's those people that God gave me. But anyway, I just wanted to minister to you, and I hope that the things that I share minister to you. You guys have been such a blessing to us. Did you know, just as way of testimony, when we bought this property, we had virtually nothing. And uh, we had $1 million we put down on this property. It was $4 million for this property. We put $1 million down and took out a $3 million loan on this. But then the Lord just uh, showed me to do this debt-free. And we bought this property in September of 2009 and didn't start construction until 2012 because of city things in the neighborhood, neighborhood uh, over here didn't want us and <laughs> we had a lot of hoops to go through. So we didn't start construction until September of 2012 and from 2012 September until January of 2014 we put 32 million dollars into this property the infrastructure the roads this building and things like that and since that time we put another 31 million I believe it is into that second building and we're now occupying 25 percent of it it that building is twice as large as this one and then we've got a parking garage, which those of you who are here probably realize we need a parking garage. Those of you who are parked way over there. And especially in the winter, uh, in the snow and things like that, it, you know, we need a parking garage. So we've got a 1,085 space parking garage already designed and the excavation has been done, none of the other work, but it's uh, 
it's going to be five times as large as this building and two and a half times as large as the other building over there. And so those are the immediate things. And then in the future, we're building uh, student housing for all of the people. We're uh, building family housing for families. Uh, we're building a um, activity center where everybody can meet with a 600 seat uh, restaurant in it. And for conferences like this, we'll be able to go over there and eat and do things. And then as the Lord provides, I've really got a vision. We've got some property next door that nothing is firm on this, but there is 450 acres available with the place that we could bring our 300 employees from Colorado Springs up here. Right now, we've got them down there and we could bring them up here if we had that. And so we got a lot of big plans for things going on. And you partners are the ones that have made it happen. I hope you uh, like what you see. How many of you, this is the very first time you've been here to this facility? Could I see your hand? Well, praise God. Awesome. Well, I sure hope you like what you built. We didn't really ask you, but we prayed about it, and I believe this is what the Lord had in it. And with that vision that I was telling you about, I'm sure this is what the Lord had in mind. So I think we did what the Lord wanted us to do. And we've got big plans. And you can go on our website too. And we have what we call it is a 3D flyover. I don't know if it's called something different on the website. But you can go and see a virtual uh, reality or I don't know what you call it, a 3D flyover. We had the guy who was the animator for Disney and animated a lot of things where they fly around and show their resorts. Uh, he got touched by the ministry and came here in two days before I told my media department, I want some kind of a 3D thing that we can go and show the whole plan. Two days before I told them that, the guy who left Disney to come to school here said, I used to do all of Disney's animation. If you need me for something, here I am. So it's just God that's putting all of this together. Amen. Let me start with a verse here in Proverbs chapter 18. And man, I've got a lot of things that the Lord's been showing me. And there's, I've only got two times to minister and I uh, am going to be hard pressed to get it all in. So I'm not sure how it'll come out. But in Proverbs chapter 18 and in verse 16, it says, A man's gift maketh room for him and bringeth him before great men. I used to think that this was talking about like an anointing, like if you're called, like in my case, to minister, to teach or something, that the anointing of God on you would open up a door for you and bring you before great men. But you know what? As I've studied this, if you look at the word that is translated gift right here, it's the same thing that is translated bribe. This isn't talking about some anointing on your life. It is talking about a monetary gift. As a matter of fact, if you look in the next chapter, there's a number of times, but look at this in chapter 19, verse 6. It says, Many will entreat the favor of the prince, and every man is a friend to him that giveth gifts. And this word gifts here, it's the exact same word. And in other places, it's actually talking about, it's even used in a negative way, talking about a bribe. So my point is, that this is saying that monetary gifts open up a door and bring you before great men. And one of the things that I'm really wanting to get across and that the Lord showed me is that there are people that are called to the marketplace. And you know, this is one of the things that Paul Milligan, that we're doing in our Bible school. We are training people to be in business. And I often tell our uh, students here, I say, I hope that all of you don't go into a full-time pulpit ministry. Which, you know, in a Bible school, I think most people would think, well, that's what it's all about. But we are trying to train people up, and we need people that are in business. And one of the points that I believe that re God really wants to get across to you is that many times we think the only people who are really called by God and are in a full-time ministry are pulpit ministries, pastors and people like that. But the Lord was speaking to me that He has called people to the marketplace. And I believe that most of you in here have been called by God. Now, there may be some of you in transition, maybe some of you that don't know exactly where you're supposed to go. 
But many of you, I believe that you are called to do what you're doing just as much as I am called to do what I'm doing. That God has called you to this. It is an anointing that is on your life. And as the Lord has been showing me this, you know, I, if I had time, I could turn over to Romans chapter 12 and it lists seven gifts of the Spirit there. Most people, when they talk about the gifts of the Spirit, use 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It talks about the gift of faith, the gift of miracles, the gifts of healings, discerning of spirits, speaking in tongues, interpretation of tongues, uh, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and they talk about those things. And those are gifts of the Spirit. But in Romans chapter 12, it also talks about things. And there it mentions ministry and teaching. And yet in the same context, it talks about a ministry of exhortation and a ministry of giving. And you know, there are people that are called to give and to exhort and to do these other things. It also talks about administration. That is a spiritual gifting just as much as a person that stands behind the pulpit. And I think that many times people don't recognize this. And so when things get hard, I think it may be a greater temptation for you to just uh, be discouraged or uh, to quit or to change directions or something. I can tell you if Jamie and I hadn't have believed that we were called and anointed by God and I could share scriptures with you, Jeremiah chapter 1, before I was formed in my mother's belly, before I came forth out of the womb, God sanctified me and ordained me to be a prophet unto the nations. I can show you the day, the place that God spoke that to me. And because I felt called when Jamie and I were going through terrible times, I guarantee you we would have quit if we'd have had any quit left in us. But we felt called to it, and we burnt our bridges behind us. And I guarantee you, there's sometimes that I honestly felt just like Peter when Jesus said, will you also leave? And he said, well, where can we go? In other words, if I had a plan B, I might take it, amen. But he had burned his bridges behind him, and he says, where can we go? You have the words of eternal life. And I can tell you that in our life, one of the things that made us not quit. And now we're seeing the blessings of God and the things of God operate in our life was the fact that I felt called. And one of the things that I really want to get across and that I believe that God needs to speak to you is that I believe you are called by God to be in the marketplace and to do what you're doing. And you need to look at this as a spiritual calling. And you really need to recognize that God has called every member of the body of Christ to do what they're doing. And not all of us are going to be behind the pulpit. Matter of fact, if all of us right here were in full-time ministry, my ministry would suffer. <laughs> you guys have been a big blessing to us. And you know what? We need you out in the marketplace. Boy, another pass. I'm trying to get into some other stuff. All of this is introduction. But another passage that I've been meditating on is 1 Chronicles chapter 29. And if you look at that, David the king had already given the equivalent of over four, uh, $50 billion worth of gold, silver, and precious stones out of his own uh, you know, government account for the building of the temple. And then in 1 Chronicles chapter 29, he came and gave a personal offering that was over $2 billion. And that was his personal money. And it just dawned on me as I was studying all of this that, you know what, Solomon, and the, the, uh, all of this was given to Solomon to build the temple, but the priest never raised a penny. They didn't take up an offering. They didn't do a thing. You know what, the king went out and through conquest and through spoil of his enemies. He accumulated all of this wealth and uh, they gave all of this to the temple. So Solomon started with over $54 billion worth of money to build the temple. And I'm getting this from my Life for Today uh, study Bible. And at the time I wrote that, I was figuring that gold was at $300 an ounce. So now it's 1300 and something dollars. So it's over four times that. That's over, what would that be? Two trillion dollars worth of gold, silver, and precious stones and stuff that were just laid at their feet. And the priest never did raise a thing. It was the secular part that provided all of this. 
And, uh, you know, in the New Testament, we're called kings and priests. The kings brought the spoil in, and then the priests did the service unto the Lord, but the, but the kings provided all of this. And I believe that the counterpart to this today is that there are people who are out in the secular market who are anointed by God to make money and to do these things. And then as they give, it enables the gospel to go around the world and to do all of these things. But you guys are the king and I'm the priest. Amen. And as David did all of this, he be, let me just read some of this because I'm telling you the whole story anyway. Let me turn over here and just read a portion of this. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but in 1 Chronicles chapter 29, when David, he gave $2 billion that day, and the people got so touched that David was giving of his own resources like this that they gave $2 billion. So there was a total of $4 billion that came in in one offering. Man, that was pretty awesome. And when David saw this, it says in 1 Chronicles 29, 10, Wherefore David blessed the Lord before all the congregation, and David said, Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel our Father, forever and ever. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heaven and is in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come of thee. Man, there are some powerful things right here. But David is basically giving the Lord the credit for this and saying, God, all of this abundance came from you, and you reign over all, and in thine hand is power and might, and in thine hand it is to make great and to give strength unto all. Now, therefore, our God, we thank thee and, and praise thy glorious name. But who am I and what is my people that we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort? For all things come of thee, and of thine own have we given thee. You know, this is tremendous theology. And again, this is one of the things that the Lord was really impressing on my heart, is that God is the source of everything that we've got. I know that, man, you work hard. I know that you've put a lot of effort into it. But you know what? If it wasn't for God that caused us to be born at this time where there is unlimited prosperity, if he hadn't have given us talents and ability, if he, you know, you go to school and you learn things, but you can't draw out what God didn't put in. God has given you talents and abilities. He's basically saying, but God, you're our source and look what he goes on to say in verse 15. For we, were, for we are strangers before thee and sojourners as were all our fathers, our days on earth as a shadow, and there is none abiding. O Lord our God, all this store that we have prepared to build thee in house for thine holy name cometh of thine hand and is all thine own. I know also, my God, that thou triest the heart and hast pleasure in uprightness, as for me, in the uprightness of my heart, I have willingly offered all these things. And now I have seen with joy thy people which are present here to offer willingly unto thee. O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, our fathers, keep this forever in the imagination of the thoughts of the heart of thy people and prepare their heart unto thee. And then he goes on and prays for Solomon. But basically, he's saying, God, what have we done? All we've done is return unto you what was already yours. You're the one that blessed us. And then he refers back to when the nation of Israel, they were all slaves in Egypt. They had nothing at one time. And everything that they had given was just stuff that God had given them. Basically, he's just saying that, God, you are our source. And, you know, this is the way it is with all of us. God is the source of everything. So two of the things that the Lord was really impressing on my heart that I wanted to share with you is that you need to recognize that God has called you and anointed you in the, in the business world to prosper, not just for your own needs, but He's anointed you. And I believe that there is a gift of giving. And you are called to it. And you can draw on the Lord the same as I do on the Lord to do the things that I do that you need to make a decision that, man, you aren't going to quit. 
And when things get hard, you know, there were so many Christians when we had the so-called Great Recession that they just started planning on failure. Hopefully that wasn't you. But there was a lot of Christians that started planning on a downturn because they were seeing things from just a world's perspective and thinking that God supplies our needs through this world system. But just like, you know, God told me to expand in 2009, right after the Great Recession. And during that time is when we started the biggest building project, the most expense that we've ever done. And our income, I don't know for sure, but it's doubled or probably four times what it was six years ago. And we have expanded while everybody else was contracting because God supplies my need according to His riches in glory, not this earth system. And I believe it's the same for you. I'm wanting you to see that God has anointed you and you don't have to be limited to this world system and God can prosper you. I believe God will give you creative ideas and you can prosper far beyond what this world system is. So you need to know that you are called and anointed and that you can draw on the anointing of God and that you do not have to just go the way of other businesses and those of you that are working for somebody else, one, uh, another thing that God really spoke to me is don't limit God. And I know that this may be a new wrinkle in some of y'all's brains. Most people see their job as their source. And if there's a recession and if the business is laying off and things like this, they just expect hard times. But brothers and sisters, I believe this with all of my heart that God can prosper you outside of your business. You do not have to look at that job as your source. As a matter of fact, look over here in Genesis chapter 1. I want to show this to you. In Genesis chapter 1, this is where it created Adam and Eve. And then in verse 29, he says, God said unto them, Behold, I have given you every herb-bearing seed which is upon the face of all of the earth and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat and to every beast of the earth and to every fowl of the air and to everything that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is life. I have given every green herb for meat and it was so. And this is what I was referring to a while ago, that the Lord showed me that before He even created Adam and Eve, He created them at the very end of the six days. He had created everything they would ever need. And so Adam and Eve, here's the way that their life went. It says in Romans, or excuse me, Revelation chapter 4, verse 11, it says that they sang, uh, For your pleasure we are and were created. That is really significant because, you know, so much has changed since the fall of man. Matter of fact, the church and ministry, as much as I believe in those things and God uses them, did you know that this is a result of the fall? If there hadn't been a fall, there wouldn't be a church. There wouldn't be a called out group. Everybody would be in relationship with God. So even though I'm for the church and I'm for the ministry and I praise God that He's given me the privilege to serve Him and to be in the ministry... Did you know that this is a result of the fall? The fall changed so much, but it says in Revelation 4.11, for thy pleasure we are and were created. That means that the original purpose and still the purpose of God for our creation was to please Him. So Adam and Eve were created for God's pleasure. So I really believe that the number one thing that they had to do was just to have relationship with God to be in relationship with Him. Boy, this is important. I could spend an hour on every one of these points talking about how, you know, so many people struggle because they get things out of order. The number one thing in your life needs to be relationship with God above anything else, above work, above family. Did you know you won't be a good family member? You won't be able to minister to your family the way the Lord would want you to if you don't have a good relationship with Him. It has to be paramount. Over in Romans 12, 1, the verses that changed my life, he said, I beseech you by the mercies of God that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto him, which is your reasonable service. That's the number one purpose of everyone. That's God's goal. So that was their purpose, was just to please God. And then 
God gave them a purpose where he said to uh, have dominion over everything and subdue it and dress the garden. So here is the thing. They had, first of all, relationship with God just for his pleasure. Then they had a purpose in life, which was to take dominion, subdue the earth, dress and keep the garden. And look at this. Provision was not even something they sought. It was an afterthought. They didn't have to provide a thing. God provided for them. But did you know that once the fall happened, everything's completely inverted? Now, what most people spend their life doing is seeking provision. And there's many people that are out working a job just trying to make things happen, and they don't even know for sure what God's purpose for their life is. There's so many people that work a job just because it's, it's what they have to do to provide for their family, and they, in a sense, just flowed into it. There's a lot of people that think that God just sovereignly, by fate, controls everything and that your life just goes the way that it goes and that you didn't uh, intentionally plan on this. I tell you, and I believe, again, that you are called to the secular realm to make money, to be a king, to help fund the kingdom of God, and you have a call on your life just as much as Jamie and I do on our lives. And if you don't know what that purpose is, if it hasn't been revealed to you, you aren't going to find it accidentally. I can promise you this. Jamie and I have not accidentally arrived where we are. I could spend a lot of time talking about that. But man, God has shown us things. We've had to move in that direction. We've had to fight discouragement and stand when it didn't look like there was any reason to stand. I believe that God does the same thing. So God has a purpose for every single person in here, every one of you, whether you're in full-time ministry, whether you're behind a pulpit, whether you're a pastor of a church, you have a purpose. You were created with a purpose. And like I told you in Jeremiah chapter 1, God said before he formed me in my mother's womb, before he brought me forth out of the belly, he sanctified me and ordained me to be a prophet. You were created by God with a purpose. Every one of you. There aren't any mistakes in here. Whether your parents knew you were coming or not, God knew you were coming. Yes. Psalms chapter 139 says that, man, you're fearfully and wonderfully made. And if you read it in the New uh, International, it says all of the days of your life were written in a book before there was a single one of them. That does not mean that God sovereignly makes those plans come to pass, but he had a plan. Whether you're a male or a female, regardless of what color you are, your gifts and talents, your abilities, everything was created and planned by God for you to fulfill a purpose. And again, I say that in the original thing, see, people just loved God. Adam and Eve were there for his pleasure. Their purpose was to take dominion and subdue the earth. And then provision was an afterthought. They never even sought provision. But now, since the fall, most people's focus is on provision. This is what they spend the vast majority of their time doing. And purpose is a secondary thing. I'm not asking you to raise your hand on this. But I've ministered to a lot of people, and I can just guarantee you this may be an exceptional group. I know that many of you uh, might be exceptional. But in a normal group of this size, I would say that 70 to 80% of the people don't know for sure that what you're spending your life doing is a call from God. Just think about that. You do inventory yourself. But there is no way you're going to accidentally fulfill God's purpose. You've got to find out what is God's purpose. And if God's called you to be in the secular world, you need to know that he's called you. You need to know that these gifts and talents and abilities that you have are from God. And that needs to be your focus. The first thing, we need to reverse this and put it back the way it was supposed to be, that it's first of all, God, I love you. I am here for your pleasure. I want to know you. Secondly, you discern what God's purpose for your life is. 
And you know, I had a, a guy that uh, was a garbage collector. And our previous CEO, he was a friend of his, and this man said that he was called by God to collect garbage. You know, most people would think, boy, you aren't aiming very high. But he says, somebody's got to collect the garbage. If you don't, man, disease would be rampant. Says this is a service. Plus, he says, I get to witness to hundreds and hundreds of people. He led people to the Lord. And this guy felt called to be a garbage collector. You know what? We need all of these things. In this ministry, the guy who is my media director, Stephen Bransford, he has been a godsend to me. This guy is just awesome. He has been a blessing. But his dad was a Pentecostal preacher. I mean, a fireball. I met him, and he was just a great, great man, but he wanted Stephen to be a preacher. So he raised his whole family to all, you know, serve, and he wanted all of his children working in the church. Stephen went to uh, Bible college and got kicked out because he was in a rock band, and the Assembly of God did not allow that back in those days and kicked him out. And so he got kicked out of Bible college. And anyway, he went into media and he helped uh, PTL get started and uh, Bob Tilton get started and James Robinson get started. And then he came to work for me and I met his dad and his dad always wanted him to be a preacher. But did you know that I could not do what I'm doing if it wasn't for Stephen Bransford and dozens of people in our media department? And I told Stephen's dad before he died, I said, your son is in ministry. Your son is preaching to millions of people every single day. I couldn't do it without him. We got Ron and Karen Bean right here that do things. And they have helped us interview people. And they put out these videos that have touched people's lives, changing people's lives. Both of them are in full-time ministry. Did you know the people that clean the facility here? I believe that God wouldn't give us a nice facility if he knew we were going to trash it. You've got to be a good steward. And part of being a good steward, somebody's got to sweep the floor. But you know, somebody had to arrange these chairs. I don't know if you noticed, but they are perfect. <laughs> they put string down here. I mean, everything here is done with excellence. They were out cleaning all of the glass on the things today. And I tell you, we have a nice place and every single person that takes care of it, you know what? They are in full-time ministry. They are touching people's lives. We've had people come to our meetings here, and they are so impressed. We've had people out here, students, parking cars that are out there in the cold, bundled up, and they have on these uh, red things on their flashlight, and they're dancing and showing people which direction to go, and people come in and say, I've never seen anything like it. And you know what? It ministers to people. We've had people talk about the people down at the guard gate that are just so nice and such a blessing. Every single one of those people are anointed and called by God. we got to get rid of this thing of the clergy and the laity. It is true that some people are called into full-time ministry service, but every one of us has a purpose, and we got to find out what that is. And I'm ministering to a group that the majority of you right here are people that are called to the marketplace to prosper. And of course, that supplies your needs, but it's also, it is a ministry. It is a gift of giving. And you need to look at it that way, and you need to start fulfilling that ministry. So again, I say that Adam and Eve, first of all, were for his pleasure. Then they had a purpose. And then... Provision was not even a thought. And let me just throw this out. Some of you may disagree with this. You might choke on this, but I really believe it. That you know what? You can get to where if God is number one in your life, and if you know your purpose and what God anointed you to do, then you don't even look at that job as your source. God is your source. You look at a job as an opportunity for me to fulfill the purpose that God put me here on this earth for. This is an opportunity for me to do some service that will minister to people. It's an opportunity for me to meet people and to witness to them and to touch people's lives and things like this. But your job isn't your source. You don't look for it, to it for that. I know some of you are thinking, man, how else is God going to get the money to me? Man, God can get money to you in so many different ways. 
You know, Pastor Lawson Purdue that ministers here in this school, his son was going to Rice and get going through a doctorate program, which is expensive. And he was really busy, and he couldn't just go out and work a full-time job because he was in a doctorate uh, degree at Rice University. And so you know what he did? He just went on Craigslist and started buying watches. And he'd clean them up and resell them, and he was making, wasn't it, $10,000 a month that he was making selling watches off of Craigslist. Man, God can be your source. God can get money to you in supernatural ways. You don't have to be limited. Ashley and Carly came here to school and because they didn't have a green card at one time. The only place they could work was here for us. And you know what? We weren't paying them as much money as they needed, but they just believed God. And God gave them creative ideas in different ways. Brothers and sisters, I think that there is a mindset in the body of Christ that they see that job as their source and they're praying for a promotion and just waiting on somebody else to promote them and to do things. And it's not like that at all. Again, Adam and Eve, because God was first and they were living for His pleasure and they knew their purpose and they were fulfilling the purpose that God gave them, provision was already there. Provision is an afterthought. And this is exactly what Matthew chapter 6 says when it says, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things, and the things He was talking about is what you eat, where you sleep, what you're clothed with, will be added unto you. I really believe that you, I'm saying, I'm not just preaching at you, but I'm trying to encourage you that you need to see that God loves you, wants a relationship with you first. He created you for a purpose. And every talent, every ability, everything about you was created by God to fulfill that purpose. And you need to know what it is. And you need to, on purpose, fulfill it. You need to seek it. And if you get those two things right, I believe God will just bless you in ways that are completely unexplainable. You know, I just had a student come up. I was teaching something along these lines in the chapel this week, and I had a student come up, and he's now a second-year student. And last year, I taught on partnership, and he came up, and he said, I determined to be a partner with you. And so he came up, and I forget all of the details, but uh, within one day after deciding to be a partner, and he says, God, I know this is what you want me to do. He prayed over it. He had his entire year of school paid for within one day. And he was telling a friend of his about it, and his friend was saying, well, you know, God's been speaking to me about that. I need to start giving an extra $200 a month. And this guy, <laughs> I just talked, anyway, I'm not going to go into all that, but I talked about some things, and this guy just... He said, God told him, he says, that guy needs to give this money to me and sow it into my life. But he didn't say anything. He felt too awkward doing it. So the next day, he called him back. And he says, you know what? God told me you're supposed to sow this $200 into me going to school here. And this guy said, you know what? I believe you're right. And he started giving him $200 a month. And within, I think, a month, he had had over a million dollars or some... some Un, uh, unbelievable figure like that that had come into his business and stuff. And all of that was outside of just working a job. Now, I am not saying that we should not work a job, but I'm saying that we shouldn't limit God to just that job. I believe that God has anointed you. You know, Paul is going to minister tomorrow. I don't want to steal any of his thunder and give his testimony, but boy, Paul is a testimony about this, that he served and worked for other people. Let me, let me use this scripture over here in Ephesians chapter 6. This goes right along with this. In Ephesians chapter 6, Paul said um, in verse Verse 5, servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling and singleness of your heart as unto Christ, not with eye service as man pleasers, but as the servants of Christ doing the will of God from the heart with good will doing service as to the Lord and not to man, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, 
the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. This was talking about slaves and masters, but today we can apply this towards bosses and employees. And it says you serve them, not only the good, but also the forward, the ungodly, the people who are antagonistic towards you. And it says don't do it as eye service. Don't just do it when you're being inspected and people are looking over your shoulder, but you need to do it as unto the Lord. In other words, you're serving the Lord. You aren't working for that boss. You aren't just working for a person, but you are working from the Lord. And if you do it, it says every good you do will be rewarded whether you be bond or free, whether you are the boss or whether you're the employee. God can promote you. And what I was referring to, Paul, are you going to tell all this story tomorrow? All right, but anyway, Paul was working for a guy that took his uh, contracts that he was getting, I mean multi-million dollar contracts if I'm not mistaken, I mean big contracts with some of these defense contractors and he was taking credit for what Paul was doing. And you know what? Paul just decided, I'm going to serve this guy. And he knew that the guy was stealing his, and taking credit for it and I guess getting the commissions. I don't know. He was getting Paul's commissions. But you know what? Paul just decided, God, I'm going to do this as unto you and I'm going to make this guy look good. And within a year or two, the whole thing had turned around. That guy left and Paul was the one that was promoted and exalted and God blessed him because he didn't see that boss who was abusing him as his source. God was his source and God rewarded him. And now Paul has started many corporations and thousands of employees. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, I think we limit God. And I can speak about this with a lot of conviction because God spoke to me January the 31st, 2002 and told me I was limiting him by my small thinking. And it's small thinking to think that that job and that paycheck that you get is your source and that this is the only way that God has of giving money to you. I'm telling you, you are anointed by God. You are money machines. <laughs> I really believe that. I believe that God has called you. You have a gift of giving. And if we would just say, God, I am here for you. I love you. I'm going to give you myself and you, you live for his pleasure and then know for a certainty what his purpose for your life is. And boy, that's a big one. That's a big one. I got a teaching on how to find, follow, and fulfill God's will. If you don't know for certain that you're doing what God called you to do, you've got to find that out. And let me just say that there are some people, I believe, that because of security reasons, they're afraid to step out and do what's really in their heart. They're, they're looking at the security of a job that maybe has uh, retirement benefits and, uh, you know, sh uh, profit sharing and things like this, and you just follow the money. Let me say some things again. I know some of you may question my ability to say this because I'm a preacher and I don't know what I'm talking about. But I've seen this many times that people had a family, they were in a church that they just loved, everything in their life was great, and then they get a promotion and they just follow the money. They don't even check out if the new place they've got to move to it has a good church. They don't know if their family's going to uh, you know, integrate into it if it's going to be good for their kids and whatever. They just follow the money. I would say nine out of ten Christians, boy, given an opportunity for a raise, would follow the money. It really shouldn't be that way. Provision should not be the driving force. It ought to be the tail on the dog. It ought to be the leftovers. Again, what is God's purpose for your life? You need to find a slot where you are doing what God called you to do. And there are some people that I believe probably have in their heart that God has something bigger for you. I was talking to one guy tonight who was talking about he thinks that there's a change coming. And I mean, he's got a good job, making good money. He's a partner. He's here tonight. And making good money, but he just feels that there's a change. Brothers and sisters, we are, this isn't a dress rehearsal. You know what? This is the real deal. We're burning daylight. 
Every day you are either getting close to fulfilling God's purpose for your life or you're just treading water. And there are some people that honestly, the reason you aren't satisfied, the reason there isn't the contentment and joy in your life is because you don't know for sure that what you're doing is what God called you to do. And maybe you've got dreams of starting your own business or you've got ideas that could do things and you've got all of these things and you've just been either too busy or insecure to step out and to do them. And I'm telling you, we need to go for it. You need to pray and let God show you. But when you're in the center of God's will, there is a satisfaction and a peace and a prosperity that comes upon you that you won't get any other way. God needs to be our source. Put God first, discover that purpose, and I believe that you will never, ever, ever have to even worry about provision. It is the byproduct. You know, I go to Charlotte, North Carolina every year. I just got back from there. 30 years I've been going there to the same church, and I just had a partner that died this year, but for 20-something years, he had a company of about 30 or 40 people in his company and every time I'd go to Charlotte, he'd invite me into his business and he'd tell them the clock's running. You listen to this guy talk as long as he wants to talk. And I'd just preach to him and pray with him and I saw awesome things happen. And anyway, one year when I came out, there was a woman sitting at this reception desk and she was an oriental lady and she wasn't back there with the rest of them. And so I introduced myself and I said, uh, who are you? And she says, oh, I'm the new kid on the block. And so they had me stay and answer the phones while everybody else was in the back. And she says, what do you do? And I said, well, I'm a minister. And boy, her eyes got big and she said, for who? And I said, for the Lord, Jesus Christ. And she says, you are the one. And I said, I'm the one what? And this woman told me that she had been a Buddhist and the night before she was going through her Buddhist ritual, whatever it was, and right in the midst of it, she just stopped and she prayed and she says, God, I know that you exist. I know that there is a God, but I can't believe that this is it. Who are you? And she said, a big ball of light just came right in front of her and it was just pulsating. And then a, a voice came to her and said, tomorrow I'll send you a man who will tell you who I am. And she says, you're the man. And I said, I am the man. Amen. <laughs> and I got to... I got to lead this woman to the Lord and into the baptism, and I mean, it was awesome. And when I got out to the parking lot, I just sat in the car for a long time, soaking all this in, thinking, God, I was in the right place at the right time. And I tell you, there is nothing like that, knowing that you're exactly where God wanted you to be. He knew I'd be there. He told this woman. And there are some of you that honestly right now can't say that I know I'm doing what God called me to do. And brothers and sisters, you can't fulfill your purpose if you aren't for sure what it is. You know, we've got people here from New York. And if you wanted to drive from here to New York, you can't just get out on the road and just start off. You're liable to wind up in California. You know, if you have a destination you have to have some idea of how to get there. You, there's multiple ways you can get there. You could make a few wrong turns along the way, but ultimately you do have to have an idea of where New York is and head in that direction. And likewise, it's a process to understand the will of the Lord. We don't understand everything in the very beginning, but you have to have a direction for your life. You have to feel like, God, you have gifted me You've called me. You've made supernatural opportunities and that this is my purpose. And you need to be heading in that direction. And then look to God. Fulfill that purpose. Do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto man. And I guarantee you provision will just come along supernaturally. You seek first the kingdom of God and then all of these other things will be added unto you. Amen? And so I've got more that I'm going to share with you, but your heart can't absorb more than your seat can endure. <laughs> so I'll wait until tomorrow night to share those other things. But I want you to know that I really believe that God has called you and anointed you. And I believe that it's God that puts you supernaturally in partnership with us. 
And I'm praying for your prosperity. And I'm praying that you would recognize that you're called and anointed by God. And I want to stir up that anointing on the inside of you. And I'm going to believe that God is going to give you creative ideas. You know, I may talk about this more tomorrow, but just real quickly, 2 Kings chapter 4, the Lord told that widow woman, what do you have? The Lord spoke this to me. What do we have? And I called out my staff together, my executive team, and we've been going over this. And just this last week, I said again, we need to go back and revisit this. But we've come up with, I don't even know, four or five major things that we are going to do, creative ideas that are going to make not only us more efficient and minister to more people, but we are actually going to start making money through this ministry. We've restructured things. We now have, what, five corporations, and one of them is a for-profit thing, and we've got some things that has the potential to make millions of dollars. And you know what? God is just showing us things, and I'm telling you, every one of you have something in your hand. God has given you. When you discover His purpose for your life, then every one of you have something that can bring that purpose to pass. And remember what I started with, that you don't now say, oh God, now I've discovered my purpose. Please give me provision. No, God has provided the provision before you ever had the need. When you discover your purpose and you start living that way, putting God first and then fulfilling His call on your life, provision is not going to be a problem. God is going to multiply and provide for you supernaturally. And that's what I believe. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So how many of you in here, let me ask this, how many of you in here, and again, I'm not trying to discourage or embarrass anybody, but I want to minister to you and help you. I really believe that God told me that there's a lot of our partners that just don't honestly have the assurance that they need that they are doing exactly what God called them to do. So I want to ask, how many of you in here do not know for certain that you are fulfilling God's purpose? Now, you may not be the full manifestation. I often say, I haven't arrived, but I've left. I can't say that I've fulfilled everything that God called me to do, but I can say I'm on track. I can say I'm moving in that direction. So how many of you in here just don't know for sure what God's purpose for your life is and you need direction in that area? If that's you, I want you to raise your hand. And there's quite a few. I want to pray for you right now. I'd like to ask you, if you would, just to stand, and I'm going to pray for you, and we're going to believe God to give you a revelation of exactly what your purpose is. And again, I'd like to encourage you to get that teaching that I have entitled How to Find, Follow, and Fulfill God's Will. Because God has a purpose. And man, you, when you know what your purpose is, it makes you excited when you get up in the morning. It really does. I mean, it's like, God, another day, I'm going to make headway. But if you, don't, you know, if you don't have a certain destination in mind, well, then any old road will do. You've got to know the purpose. So, Father, right now, for all my brothers and sisters who are standing Father, thank you for them. Thank you that you created all of us with a purpose. Just like you told Paul, like you told Isaiah, like you told Jeremiah, that even from our mother's womb, you had a purpose for us. You created us. And Father, I'm asking you to place a holy dissatisfaction in the hearts of all of my partners here that are standing, Father, that they would not be content but just continuing on as is, but that, Father, we would find out exactly what our purpose is. Even if, we're, if, if we've stumbled onto it and if we're doing your purpose for our life, Father, we want to know. We want to hear from you. We want you to confirm it to us. And so, Father, we stand on the Scriptures in James that if anybody lacks wisdom, all we have to do is ask of God. And you won't rebuke us, but you'll give it to us liberally. We ask in faith. And Father, I believe that you are imparting this wisdom to us. You said, don't be ignorant, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. So Father, right now, we are just receiving this wisdom. And Holy Spirit, we believe that you are revealing to every person here 
exactly what your purpose for them is. Thank you, Jesus. You know, right now the Lord is speaking to me that He's taking some of you in your own heart and in your mind back to when you were a kid and you had dreams. You just knew that you were going to do certain things, but then life got in the way and you've had all kinds of disappointing things. Some of you have gone through divorce. Some of you have gone through bankruptcy, through failures, health issues, all kinds of things. But the Lord says, Romans 11, 29, that the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. Those of you that had God put a dream in your heart as a child, the calling has never changed. And regardless of what detour you've taken, God can put you back on track. I'm just saying these things to confirm. God is speaking to some of you right now and bringing you back to your first love bringing you back to when you were just childlike and innocent and you weren't letting circumstances tell you it can't happen. You were dreaming and taking the limits off God. God is telling some of you to return back to those things. What are those dreams that God put in your heart? Praise God. I believe that there's more than one person here that that's speaking to. God has already given you direction. There's others that the Lord is, look, is having you reevaluate your life and look at your talents. You've got talents and abilities that don't fit where you are right now. There are some of you that have a passion for things. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 37, verse 4, delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. That doesn't mean He'll just give you whatever you want. That means when you put God first, He puts His desires in your heart. And there are some of you, the reason you desire to be doing something else is because God is leading you through that desire. There's some of you that hate the job that you have. That's not God. Either you are out of relationship with God, you aren't loving and serving God the way you should or you are in the wrong place because when you are in the right place there is a supernatural satisfaction there will be a peace and a contentment that goes along with it thank you Jesus well these are words from God for people in here that God is redirecting you somebody in here is thinking well it's too late for me I'm already old Man, God says that if you put Him first and if you begin to find that purpose and pursue it, it doesn't matter how old you are. God can prosper you. There will be such a supernatural prosperity. It'll be like there was a dam that was built that was just holding all of this prosperity and all of this blessing that God had originally intended for your life. And the moment you make that decision to find that purpose and fulfill it, it's like that dam breaks and you are going to have a flood of provision come towards you that will be greater than you've had in your entire life up until this time. Man, that's a word for someone here. You know what you need to be doing and you just haven't stepped out and you think it's too late. No, do it. Do it. God is saying to some of you that you just now have learned enough. You've got enough sense now to go out and start doing things right. And you need to do it. You need to step out. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we receive these words. Thank you for speaking to your people. Thank you that right now you are placing desires in people's hearts. Thank you, Jesus. Lord's also speaking that some of you are working so hard. You're working double shifts, double jobs that you don't even have time to put God first and to listen to Him and find your provision. You're just treading water. You're just so occupied. God says, stop it. You need to be still and know that He is God. This doesn't mean that you quit your job and just go on welfare. This is saying that you need, to, you need to set aside time. You need to go to seeking God. And if you'll do it, God wants to reveal himself to you. Thank you, Jesus. 
there are some of you in here that have creative ideas that you have sat on for years and you haven't done anything with it. God says it's time. It's time for you. And some of you just say, but I don't know what to do. The Lord is saying in the near future, He is going to start sending people across your path that will enable you, that will make the connections for you to be able to get these things done. You need to be looking for it. You need to expect it based on what the Word is saying right now. God is going to send you people, and man, you need to step out. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we agree, and we receive this in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Y'all agree with that? Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. You can be seated. Now, I want to ask those of you who know what your purpose is and you're in process, I just want to impart into you and pray for you. If that's you and if you know what your purpose is and you're in process, you're heading in that direction and you just need an impartation, you've sown seed into this soil and this soil is going to start giving back to you, amen. I want you to stand up if you know what your purpose is and we're going to pray for you and we're going to believe for a supernatural impartation to happen. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I'm blessed that this is the majority of you. This is, I've asked things similar to this before and usually it's 70, 80% of the people don't have a clear direction. Boy, this speaks well. And you guys are the cream of the crop. Amen. So, Father, I thank you for all of these. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I wish I could lay hands on every one of you. I don't know how to do this. Thank you, Jesus. I'm just going to speak. You know, the Bible says that he just spoke the word and things happened. So, even though I'd love to lay hands on you, and you can impart things through the laying on of hands, you can also release the power of God through the spoken word. And I want you to reach out. This is going to put more effort on you because you're going to have to stand in faith. But you have sown into this ministry. And I'm going to release the anointing, the blessing that God has placed on my life and on this ministry to you. And I believe that you are going to prosper like you have never, ever prospered in your life. You are going to see supernatural return. Father, I just pray right now and in the name of Jesus, Father, you said that a man's gift would open a door and bring him before great men. These people have sown a gift, and I speak right now in the name of Jesus and command doors to open for them. Father, doors that are outside of just their work, not just things in the natural. Father, we're praying for supernatural provision to come from every direction. Father, I thank you that money is going to come that they don't have any idea about, that it's going to be totally outside of the norm. Father, we make you our source. Just like David prayed, Father, we say that everything we have came from and Father, you are the source. And so right now, we are realigning our focus upon you, that you are our source. And I am speaking over these partners that there is supernatural abundance, supernatural prosperity coming upon their lives, into their businesses. Let's have everybody stand. Those of you who are still praying for purpose, I know that you've been sowing into this ministry, and I want everybody in here to receive this. So, Father, they have sown seed here, and I just speak back a hundredfold return in this life. In this life. Father, not just in eternity, but in this life. Right now, we command contracts that they've been working on, clients that they've been speaking to. Father, I thank you that you are changing people's hearts. Thank you that supernatural favor is being released right now in Jesus' name. And Father, they are going to set their hand unto things and it's going to prosper like never before. I just speak this blessing over them in the name of Jesus. The Lord reminds me from Luke chapter 5 about the disciples who fished all night long and caught nothing. But the 
the Lord said, now let down your nets for a drought. And they said, we've caught nothing. We've been fishing all night. But at your word, we will let down these nets. And they couldn't even haul in all of the fish. The Lord is saying that right now there is an anointing. There is a blessing flowing towards you. And if you will go back and do some of the exact same things that, you know, look good, but it just didn't work, but you do it now believing that the anointing of God is flowing through you, you are going to see things prosper just like they did fishing. They caught nothing, but after they did it at the word of the Lord, they couldn't contain all of it. And I speak in the name of the Lord that you are going to prosper so much that you won't even have room enough to contain it. You're going to have so much prosperity, you won't know what to do with it. I got a suggestion. <laughs> but Father, we just thank you in the name of Jesus that you are prospering us. Thank you for finances flowing. Thank you for businesses. You know, there's some of you that already have prosperous businesses, but you are debating about branching out, starting other offices and things. And the Lord is saying right now, man, go for it. Now, you need to have a word from God, but I believe for those of you who are already thinking about this and feeling that this is what God was inspiring you to do, God is saying, go for it. He's going to bless what you set your hand unto. A hundred times zero is zero. Set your hand unto it. Start doing it. Well, the Lord is speaking to me that many of you need to continue the job that you have but God has given you some creative ideas and you need to start moving in that direction and laying the foundations because you're going to find out that this idea that God has given you is ultimately going to make much more money. It's a different stream of revenue to you than what you've been limiting God to. You need to have multiple ways for God to get this money to you. Father, I pray for those that have the gift of giving. Father, we recognize that as a supernatural gift, just as, the, as you've called me into the ministry and given me gifts. Father, I pray that right now you just burn it into people's hearts that they've been called to this gift of giving. Father, we surrender to this call. We surrender to it and believe that this is a purpose that you've given us. You've made us kings to go out and to conquer and to take the spoil and to finance the gospel, to get the word out all around the world. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just agree and we speak this. We thank you, Father, for doing miracles here tonight. I believe that there has been an impartation by words and that, Father, you are just causing a supernatural flow of finances and abundance. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we agree. We receive it. We receive it here tonight. Father, thank you. Thank you for calling us all together. Father, thank you for bringing people here from all over the world to be partners together, to get your will done. And Father, we thank you and believe that there is a supernatural impartation of this anointing to prosper and to get wealth. And Father, we thank you. We we put you first in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Y'all agree with that? Amen.